God bless you, family. God, welcome back to the Morning Devo. Listen, my name is DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam Lopez, and you're watching the Morning Devo. So, listen, relax a little bit. Amen. Um, simmer down if you're like riled up right now. If you're at work, amen, listen up. If you're hopefully you're on break, you're not stealing your boss's time, amen. And if you're running, jogging, you're listening to the podcast, working out, whatever, welcome back to the Morning Devo. Listen, I'm going to try my best to read the scripture and stay out of it, amen, because it's not my job to convince anyone, not my job at all to convince anyone about God and who he is, right, to prove his existence. It's not my responsibility, amen. That is the work of the Holy Spirit God that does the convicting, amen, and convincing. And today, listen, God is love all the way through, all the time, every time, amen. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, God is love. And that is a staple of who God is. This characteristic is love. His essence is love. How he moves is by love. Amen. And he has power, all power, all authority. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere here. Amen. He's all knowing. Amen. Almighty, all powerful. And he is love as well. So I don't have to convince nobody about that. Amen. Jesus himself, by way of his Holy Spirit, convinced me as I was drawn to him. He convinced me. Now that I know that I know that I know that he is love and he loves me. Amen. When hard times of life comes to my life. Amen. I know I don't know about you. Well, I go through hard times sometimes. What about you? I don't know, right? But when that happens, I trust and I believe and I'm totally convinced. I am convinced that God loves me. Amen. And nothing can separate us from that love. So I wrote here on the morning diva I was going through this, man. When you know that you know that you are loved, that's when you can hang in there when life gets hard. Are you convinced? Amen. And today, uh, I don't know what happened to my title. And today we're talking about I am convinced on the morning devo. Amen. And my title, I don't know why my title didn't show up. Amen. But that's all right. I'll fix that later on on the the streaming pages. But that's where we're at today. We're going to be in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. When you know that you know that you are loved, that's when you hang in there when life gets hard. Are you convinced? Amen. And we're going to take it there. We're going to leave it there. Amen. For a little bit. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, or you could really relate to that. Amen. Maybe you're like, listen, Sam, I don't know what love you're talking about. I'm going through this, that, and a third. Where is God? I don't see God in sight. I need him. I needed him like yesterday. And you're going through a hard time and life is hitting you from every single way from north, south, east and west. And you feel like you're getting a right jab, a left jab, a right hook, a left hook, uppercuts. You think that life is beating you up and you find yourself not convinced that God loves you. Amen. This is for you today. This is the word of God for your life. Amen. I need to know this as well. Amen. I need to remind myself of why I'm convinced. Amen. Remind myself of who Jesus is in my life. Remind myself of when, when time gets hard, times get hard. Amen. Which, listen, let's face it. Either you just got out of a storm of life, you're in a storm of life, yeah, you know, or one is coming. Amen. No matter what, we have this like revolving storms coming into our lives. As we get older, trust me, I could tell you. Amen. And I could endorse it by the promise of Jesus. He said, in this world, you will have troubles. But when troubles come, he said, be of good cheer because he's come and overcome this world. He already overcame this world system. Amen. And all the troubles we face. He annihilated death. He took care of the sin issue. Now we just have to believe and trust and stay convinced about the love of God over our lives. Amen. So listen. I'm going to pray. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests at any time during this morning Devo, whether I'm live or not, whether you're watching from the live stream or you're listening from the podcast, listen, something comes up in your heart and your mind. Amen. Share it. If you want it to be personalized, no problem. You could always email me at DJ Sandrock at Soul Winners with a Z dot ORG, or you can inbox me on any of the social media platforms um, that you're watching or listening from, and I'll get to you. Amen. If you want those just between our eyes only. So, and all of 
Volos fails, hey man, you could join me, hang out with me over here at live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, all things, all soul winners, hey amen. I'm really trying to build that um, page up and that website up and that community up, hey amen. There we have everything we need. We have a live chat, we could communicate. We have a place where you could be my guest. You could um, subscribe to my podcast, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You have a place where you can see my notes when I'm live and you could take your own notes and you have an interactive live Bible right there. So it's like an incredible, like super app right there at your disposal. Live that someone is with a Z dot org. And also, if you have not signed up to live that someone is with a Z dot org, what are you waiting for? It takes less than 40 seconds. Just give me a nice little image of how you want to be represented, your name that you want me to address you by, and your best email so I could connect you. Yes, stay connected outside of the matrix of this um, of this thing that we call social media or the matrix, the platform, whatever you want to call it. So over there is like distraction free. There's not really a lot of distractions there. Amen. But we can stay connected there as well. Amen. Shout out to Hugh Jazz. I'm convinced. Hugh Jazz says, I'm convinced. Amen. Yo, what's up? What's good, Sam? What's good, Hugh? Amen. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. So we're going to be in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Amen. And um, let's pray. And then we'll take 60 seconds to share this out. Help me break the algorithm. Help me come out of this shadow ban. Help me move forward. And thank you for all those who allowed me to share on your group pages, on your, you know, on your profiles. That Thank you for sharing, man. That really helps me out. And it really helps spread the gospel message to the masses throughout the social media, regardless of the shadow ban. And I see the increase of viewers, the increase of listenership, because you're helping me out. Amen. We need each other. We're better together. Amen. By myself, I can't do it. But with you know, with you and your help, amen, of course, the Holy Spirit and filling and dwelling spirit of God in me and in you, amen, if you're born again, then we could get this done in a powerful way and reach way more people than the algorithm wants us to reach, amen. Brother Ricky, good morning, God bless you, welcome back to the Morning Devo, morning blessings, sweetheart, I believe, if somebody's calling me sweetheart, that gotta be my wife, amen, uh, so I don't know, she forgot to click the button, let me make sure, amen, because I don't want to be called sweetheart other than if it's my mom, my sister, or family member, or my wife. Amen. So let me just go and make sure. Plus, I have to fix. I don't know why the title didn't come on here. Amen. That's kind of strange why my title didn't pop up. So it's one of those things. Amen. Um, And I can't get on. So it looks like uh, Facebook is um, on the blocking zone again. So Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for loving every single viewer, every single listener right now at the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord God, that those who feel that they are not loved, that you will remind them that you are the lover of their souls, the lover of my soul. You are the guardian, the protector. You are the one who brings life. You are the one who secures us. You're the one who seals us by way of your Holy Spirit. And I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. I speak life over every single person that's watching every single person that's listening my family your family and those everybody in between friends and enemies that the love of God will overcome any obstacle in our lives and that we will be convinced and stay convinced that you are the author and finisher and perfecter of our faith and what you start in our life you will complete it to the day of the Lord I thank you Lord God for the hedge of protection over my life and my family's life from the very youngest family member to the very oldest and everyone in between I speak that over every single viewer and listener right now every single friend every single foe every single person that's logged on now every single person that's going to log on later I pray Lord God the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So let's take a minute and when we come back we'll be in Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39. I'll be right back.
Amen. Amen. We're back. We're back. Amen. Economics smartest in three years of my college. Amen. So Hugh Jazz says, working hard in college, economics. I'm the smartest and only three three year old in my college. Amen. Amen. I'm always got to see uh, my favorite DJ during my economics lecture. <laughs> wow, that's messed up. Why, why you're in the lecture? Amen. You're watching this. That's crazy, man. I'll be careful. I don't want you to get in trouble for doing that. Um, people love me, but are jealous because I'm the smartest three-year-old in the country. Amen. So you might be the smartest three-year-old in the country, but the smartest ever to ever live and ever breathe life into us is the Lord himself. Amen. So are you convinced? That's the question. Romans chapter 8, 38 and 39. I am convinced that nothing, this is the thing that Apostle Paul says, nothing, 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 nothing can uh, separate ever. So this is this is how convinced the apostle is. Amen. He says, "Listen, I don't care what's happening, what's going on. Nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Nothing." Amen. Now, a lot of people use the scripture and say, "No matter what I do, God still loves me." That's what not. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Not that we can't be separated from God. Please read the scripture for what it is. Neither death nor life. Amen. So right away he says, listen, life or death, death or life cannot separate us. Neither angels nor demons. So if they're talking about angels and they're talking about demons in the scripture, that means they exist. Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. And how many people deal with worry and fear? So relevant. People say, oh, the scriptures are not relevant anymore. So relevant. So our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Amen? Now, the powers of hell. If hell is mentioned in the scriptures, that means it's a reality. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in who? In Muhammad? In Buddha? No. In Joseph Smith? No. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen? Sometimes, since we're sanctified people, we're set apart, it's our God, our Lord. We have to say it. When you're in a crowd of unbelievers, you have to mention that Jesus is your Lord, your Savior. Amen? Because they might not be their Lord and their Savior. So we understand that. Amen? And that's why the sanctification process, the separating that God does for us to be used for His kingdom, for His work. Amen? It's a process. And sometimes it gets lonely. Amen? You know how people say it gets lonely at the top. Not that we're at the tip top of anything. Amen? But to be separated from the world is a, it's a pulling away. Amen? The things that we're so used to doing, the things that we say are good to do, the things that we say are good are really evil. Evil is really, you know, they call it evil good and good evil. Things like that will separate us. God wants to use you. God wants to use me and separate us, sanctify us for his purpose. So even all of that, all that list, hell, heaven, uh, you know, demons, everything, life, death, anything, nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us. From God's love. Amen. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Not heaven. So no power in the sky above or in the earth below. I want to know what's in the earth below that has a power. Amen. Could it be the power of the grave? Could it be, you know, the earth's core? What is it? I don't know. I will have to do a deeper study. If you know, let, let a brother know. Amen. So let's go. And Ricky Kennedy prayers. Amen. Amen. If you need prayers, Ricky, you already know what to do, how to do it, how to connect with me. Amen. And you will have your prayers um, really looked at and really taken care of. Amen. At least by your brother here in Christ. Amen. Shout out to Christiana, Christina Applegate. Um, hopefully, uh, guys. okay. So Hugh Jazz is on his mission again, um, uh, making uh, funny comments. But amen. Welcome anyway. Just stay here because I'm convinced that God has a way of convincing you as well. Convincing every single person who is listening, who is really being mindful of what's happening in the word of God over your life. Amen. That right there, Lord, 
the Lord can convince you at that point. I'm not the one that does the convincing. Thank you, Jesus. It takes that weight off any Christian's shoulder. Any Christian that's going out there thinking that we can convince people of the word of God, of who Jesus is, who, who God is, the existence of God. Amen. Um, you're up for an uphill. So it's that's like an uphill battle, man. You're starting from ground zero and you're trying to convince the world that God is real. That's not our job. Amen. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. And we take those weights off our shoulder. If you're pressuring yourself so much that way, you're, it's curtains for you. And you're going to get tired out. You're going to get worn out. You're going to get stressed out. Amen. You're going to get burned out because that's not our position. What does the Bible say for Christians to do? Preach the gospel. Amen. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. Amen. Love your God. Ultimately, first and foremost, no other God will be before him. Amen. So Apostle Paul the one who wrote so much of the New Testament, amen, the one who went through scourging and they beat him up so many times, locked him up so many times, amen, he was um, in front of people, in front of his brothers, Hebrew brothers, amen, and in front of everybody that he was a witness to, he would preach this message of Jesus and him crucified, amen. So I am convinced. Can you say you're convinced? If you're not convinced, listen, it, it is what it is. You're not convinced. Amen. For whatever reason, you might have formed and fashioned your own God, your own reality. Amen. And when life gets hard, this, you don't really have nothing to hold on to. Amen. You don't have any hope. You don't have any love. There's nothing you could trust. No one you could trust. Nothing you could rely on. There's no word over your life. Amen. And that's a sad place. And that's where I was before Jesus. But now that I have Jesus, I'm convinced. And listen, I had to be convinced. God knew that I had to be convinced of who he was. I had to. There was no there was no preacher, there was no smart person, there was no evangelist, there was no person, you know, person that could convince me or argue me, argue me into the kingdom of God. It was impossible. I had my mind set that there was no God, that nothing was going to happen in my life. There was going to be no change. Amen. It, it was what it was. I created my own God. I created my own situation. I created all the things that were happening in my life. Amen. I was a part of the creation of that until I said, you know what? Enough is enough at the age of 30 years old. So no, I didn't grow up in the church. No, I wasn't convinced. Amen. I didn't feel the love of God. I just didn't know the love of God. I knew the love of my family, the love of my parents, the love of my brothers and sister. I knew that type of love. I knew the love so-called love of my girlfriends, um, the love of the family in the streets and my bros in the hood and all that. I knew that love, but I didn't know the love of God. The very thing that was missing was the most important thing that was missing. So at the age of 30, I said, listen, I tried everything, you know, everything the world offered, I pretty much did. So, you know, where am I now? Like, that's how I came to God. Like, what is it now? There has to be more. Amen. And then he showed up. Because he loved me. He shows up because he loves you. In any situation in your life, believe it or not, if you're here right now, if you're alive today, if you have breath in your lungs, <clears throat> if your health is being challenged but you're still alive, God is still demonstrating his own love. Not the love of this world, not the love really too much of your family, your relationships, but God's love. And you have to be convinced. If you're not convinced, then you're not convinced. It is what it is. You know that you know that you know that God is love and God loves you or you don't know. There's no really no other options. Amen. And I am convinced, Apostle Paul said, and I can say this too. I can agree 100% with what Apostle Paul is saying. I am totally convinced, amen, that nothing could ever separate us from God's love. Let me see how this reads in the Amplified Version, amen, because that's the New Living Translation. Let's see what the Amplified Version says. <clears throat> Romans 38, 838. For I am convinced... And continue to be convinced. Amen. This is not a like you get argued in to the kingdom, right? And then you start looking around and say, I don't know what to do here. It's not that type of situation. <clears throat> Apostle Paul says, For I am convinced and continue to be convinced. Continue to be convinced. Amen. God keeps on showing up in his life and in my life. Amen. I don't know about you, but God continuously shows up in my life. When I don't know what to do, God directs me. When I don't know what to say, God speaks. Amen. When I feel challenged, God will overcome the challenge with me. Amen. Or when I feel threatened, God will protect me. Amen. When I feel sick, God will heal me. This is this is a real thing, a real phenomenon, a real situation, real time. For I'm convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt. 
Now, uh, I must admit, sometimes doubt tries to creep in the back door of my heart and of my mind. What about you? You ever doubted God? You ever doubted the situation? You ever doubted the Bible? You ever doubted the Gospels? You ever doubted this credible, fact-filled faith that we have? Amen? Some say, oh, that's a sin. You're not supposed to doubt. Listen, we're in a broken, fallen world. And because we're in a broken, fallen world, doubt will enter into our mind one way or another or try to enter into our mind. Amen. That's why the Bible says to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Because, listen, it's it's a doubt issue. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, you know, those are the demons, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers. Amen. Apostle Paul is going through the line and it seems like he knows a couple of things about being challenged. The man was put in prison. The man was beaten up almost close to death. The man was um, being ridiculed. The man was being kicked out of synagogues. Um, but the man was preaching the gospel. Nor height, nothing above, nor depth, no, nothing below, nor any other created thing. And that's a Bible study right there. What, do you, what does it mean by any other created thing? Amen. We'll be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I like that. Unlimited love. Every single situation, love situation you have with another human being, um, that love might be limited. But when you have a love situation going on with God, our Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, it's unlimited love. Unlimited love. Sister Joanne, God bless you. Good morning. Amen. Um, like your shirt. Uh, I have <laughs> to have one of them. Amen. Amen. I don't think if they make these anymore, it's an old shirt, Sister Joanne. And uh, I'll look it up online. You send me your size. And if they still have the shirt, I'll order you one and send it to you. Amen. So you could do that in the inbox. <clears throat> but I don't. I, this is an old shirt. Amen. It's really big on me. Amen. So uh, it's an old shirt. But I found it in my closet. I said, well, that would be, it just caught my eye. And I didn't know. That was last night. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that I was going to be in this lane right here. So God set me up with this shirt. Amen. I found it in my closet. I haven't worn it probably in a while. So God is love. Amen. So are you convinced? What part of these verses is most meaning to you, meaningful to you right now? Like what part of these verses? Is it the powers of hell that can separate you from the love of God? Is it angels or demons that can separate you from the love of God? Is it the worries about tomorrow cannot separate you from the love of God? What part of these verses is most meaningful to you right now? What part of this verse do you need? And I'm going to speak on it. I need it all. Amen. Because every single one of these things are coming to me in my life and in your life as well. Amen. Um, Sister Joanne says, God bless you. I love you and your wife and the kids. Amen. You got a good heart. I don't care if the shirt is old or whatever it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We love you too over here. Amen. And Hugh Jazz says, I'm still not convinced. Amen. Like a lot of people. Amen. Uh, there's a large percentage of people like they did surveys of this, you know, uh, the nations are becoming atheistic, amen. Um, they call an autonomous nation, like they want everything to happen according to their own mind and everything like that. So, you're going to join the crowd of people, unconvinced people, amen. There's so many more people like you that are not convinced for whatever reason, amen. I have to respect that. I used to be on that unconvinced side as well, so I can't point fingers and I can't judge, amen. I could just know that God convinced me and God convinced a lot of my peoples, a lot of my friends, amen, and millions and millions of people around the world are totally convinced of this word, totally convinced of Jesus being Lord, amen. There's so much evidence of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, of him existing, him being um, crucified, him dying, him coming out of the grave, and with all the technology that we have, it's it's crazy. The Bible is amazing because all the technology we have in this world right now, man, if the Bible was not real, we would have been known about it. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about the conspiracy theories of the missing books and the so-called this and the so-called that and the bones of Jesus that they come up with every around every two years on Eastern National Geographic and all these other channels that try to say we found the bones. 
Come on now. If you really found the bones, there would be no more Christianity. If you found the body of Christ, there would be no more Christianity. Amen. Um, but everything else could be found. Amen. I don't know about the cross that he was um, crucified on, if they really found that. Uh, they say that they know where the gravesite is. They know where his, his tomb is. They know where all those things are. But a lot of other things uh, are mysterious. Amen. And why wouldn't it be mysterious if we're dealing with the almighty, all-knowing, all-loving, all-holy, all-righteous God? Amen. Should we know everything about God as human beings? I don't think so. Then that would not make him God if we knew every single secret about him. Amen. God has mysterious ways, yet he made himself clear and he showed up plain and clear to us. So that way we can know that he was with us, he is for us, he is over us, and he is in us if you're a believer in Christ. And that's why I'm convinced that he loves me and he loves all those who call upon his name. As a matter of fact, listen. Let me just tell you something. Those who are not convinced, God still loves you. Those who don't believe in Jesus, God loves the atheist. Amen. He created everyone in his image, but not everyone is a child of God. Only Jesus gives you the right to be called children of God. Amen. So that's the whole kicker to the whole thing. But the beautiful thing about God is that he doesn't force his way into anybody's life. Amen. If you're doing you and you don't need God. You think you don't need God. You can just go about your way. You have enough of whatever money, success, friends, family. Everything's going good. That's beautiful. Amen. God bless you. One day is not going to be good. And all your family members are not going to be with you all the way through. Amen. The money's not going to always be there. The health is not going to always be there. Amen. The the life is not going to always be on the top of the mountain situation. You could have pitfalls. You could have, you know... um, Situations that are going to lead you to the valley. Amen. You're going to be confused sometimes. You're going to need what you don't believe. You're going to need who you don't believe. Amen. It's amazing to me that people don't believe in miracles until they need one. And it's so more, much more amazing to me that people don't believe in God until they realize he's the only one they have. That could get them out of situations that only God could get them out of. Amen. So I've been there before. So I, I, I know I continue to pray for all the unconvinced people. But for me and for a lot of people that I know, we are convinced because God keeps on showing up, keeps on convincing, keeps on showing up. He keeps on reminding us of who he is. He's actually so real in our lives. Amen. That we could actually speak to him through prayer. And this amazing God that so many people say that does not exist. He actually responds. He actually responds. So what are you going to do with that? Oh, it's your imagination. Man, listen, I ain't got time for a big imagination like that to create a God in my own mind. I don't have the time for that. Amen. I don't have the time um, to look at the scriptures and make myself believe in the scriptures. I don't have time for that. That has to be our inside job. God is working an inside job. Amen. And it's coming out. It's coming out through my life, my mouth. Amen. Through so many believers around the world, their lives and their mouths. Amen. Signs, miracles, and wonders are still happening. People are still getting saved. People are still getting baptized in the spirit. People are getting born again. People are still getting healed from diseases. People are convinced. Amen. And it's really not a a debate. Think about it. Either God is real or he's not. It's really not a debate. And I know there's professional people who go out there. They call apologetics people, apologeticists. They go out there and they contend for the faith of Christianity. They contend. They they know I could get you connected. If you want to have a debate, I'll I'll get you connected to the professional debaters. Amen. They're good. Amen. Um, and it's a part of being uh, part of their calling. Amen. To be a believer and to contend for the faith. To know what they know that they know. Amen. And it's not only pie in the sky ideas. It's not only just faith. Amen. There's facts in our faith, and our faith is not based off our feelings doesn't have to do with our feelings. I don't have to feel saved, amen? I just know I'm saved. I don't have to feel God. I know God is real in my life, right? I don't have to, I don't have to do anything. The Bible says you don't have to believe. You don't have to do anything. The Bible says you could do all things you want to do. You could do anything you want to do, but not all things will be beneficial to your life and to your family's life, amen? So John 3, 16 is, is you know, the Christian, you know, scripture that everybody knows. But if you read the whole chapter, John chapter 3, you're going to find out why people don't believe in Jesus and why people don't believe in the whole scriptures and all that stuff. It's right there. It's right there in the scriptures. Uh, the Bible is one of the most honest or the most honest book that I've ever read. It, it shows you both sides of the coin. Amen. It shows you both sides of people. It shows you good and evil. It shows you that you could make choices on your own. 
That's it. Am I convinced? Yes. Apostle Paul is convinced. You're convinced or not? Amen. It's a question. Amen. I think it's a fair question. Are you convinced? No, I'm not, I'm not convinced, Sam. It's all good. Amen. It's not really all good according to the world Christian worldview. It's a bad thing to reject the good news of the Lord. It's a bad thing to deny the truth of God. It's a bad thing. Amen. Because the consequences for not believing, the consequences for not being convinced, the consequences for rejecting God, the consequences are really stated in the scriptures. What happens? Amen. After we're out of here, out of this world. Amen. What happens? The Bible speaks on it. Amen. And so many people in the Old Testament testify of the greatness, the goodness, the reliability of God, all of that. Amen. So I'm out of time. I just lost the time over here. Amen. So I hope you are convinced. If you're not convinced, amen, I'll continue to pray that the God that does the convincing and the convicting, amen, will reveal himself to your life. Sometimes, listen, that you have to have a personal encounter with God on your own. Amen. Um, there's, not, there's nothing a preacher, an evangelist, apostle, a prophet, pastor, teacher, none, none of those people could convince you about God of his reality, of him being real. I could testify, I could share my testimony, I could give you scriptures, I could do all of that. But at the end of the day, if you're not having a personal encounter with God yourself, you will never be convinced. I could testify. I was not convinced until I had a personal encounter with God. Amen. He came to where I was. I couldn't get to where he is. Amen. He took. He came to where I was. I didn't find God. God found me in my condition. Amen. So listen. I bless you all in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hanging out with me for this morning, Devo. Until the next time, God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good and God is love. Peace.